Hi, I'm Kim Anderson, flying solo today from Missoula Live. I'm the Director of Programs and Grants for Humanities Montana, and I'm also a board member of Missoula Community Access Television. Every two weeks, we host an hour-long Missoula Live, which focuses on uh, the staggering number of community events that go on in Missoula and the uh, surrounding area and help local nonprofits promote all the great activities that they're doing. But first, a little business. Um, I want to remind everybody who's watching that uh, MCAT is still offering their Lego Animation Saturdays. There it is on the screen. Um, for children ages primarily ages nine to two teens. This is a drop-in program where uh, kids can show up from one to five on Saturdays. It costs $10. Snacks are provided, I believe. Um, and they can learn how to create animation using Legos. It's an incredible um, program. It's been really popular with kids. Uh, you might check if you have a younger child, younger than nine. Sometimes there's flexibility there. You don't have to plan ahead. One to five, if it's a gloomy afternoon, um, get your kids involved in doing something um, creative and new and special and learning a skill that uh, is to be able to apply to lots of different things. So that's uh, a reminder of some of the stuff that's going on at MCAT. I would also like to say that if you are planning a public humanities event, that is uh, anything that involves history, literature, philosophy, jurisprudence, the environment. Um, if, you're, if you're planning some sort of event and need some financial support, for an event that is uh, humanities related and open to the public, you can uh, check our website, there it is on the screen, and uh, look at our grants. We have a December 20th deadline for grants uh, $1,000 or higher. Um, we suggest that the first thing you do is contact me, Kim Anderson, at Humanities Montana, and we can chat about your project and see if it might be appropriate for you to apply for funding. So that's all I've got uh, for the inside business, and I'm lucky enough to have Stephanie Potts here with me today as our first guest. Stephanie's with the Natural History Museum, mm -hmm. and uh, you've got something new and very impressive to share with us. Yes. Um, so the Montana Natural History Center is celebrating our 25th anniversary this year, and it's also the 25th anniversary of our Field Notes program. And so to celebrate, we've put it into book form. So. We are going to have a Field Notes launch party for this book on Friday, this Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Montana Natural History Center. So that's for people who are, are watching at various times because we play yes. this show every day. So that's Friday, November 18th. 18th, yep. Already November 18th. I know. So. <laughs> um, yeah, and so it's going to be, it's free to the public. There'll be some hors d'oeuvres and drinks um, and readings from the book. And um, if you can make it, you can buy the book there. We even have free gift wrapping and kids' activities. Um, you can also get it on our website or just stop into the Montana Natural History Center at any point. It's an absolutely gorgeous book. I'm, I'm so impressed. But for people who, um, I, I'm sure everybody has heard Phil Notes on Montana Public Radio but might not know what they were here. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about this show and what, what essays are in this book? Sure. Um, yeah, it's a, so the Field Notes program was started 25 years ago as an education and outreach program of um, MNHC, and they are short natural history essays. Um, they're written by volunteers. They're about 600 words each, so they take about five minutes on the radio or a page mm -hmm. in the book. So they're short, about one topic. But what I really like about them is that they really sort of tie some sort of personal experience in the outdoors in with science. So you connect to the person, but you also learn a little bit while you're reading them. So, um, and this book's organized seasonally. So there's winter, spring, summer, fall sort of themed is oh, how they've organized nice. it. So you could almost do like a daily reading for yeah. yourself to inspire you. I'm always caught, you know, if I'm 
uh, driving or at my desk at work and I'll hear just, you know, I'll come in even in the middle and hear this amazingly interesting little bitty fact that somebody noticed, mm -hmm. you know, doing work out in the wild and, and it reconnects you, it recharges you in some way. It really does. I mean, I just learned about otters today from the field note that was on <laughs> earlier this week and um, I mean, just things that I had never known about them and um, like, for instance, otters in the summertime, they've got lots of food, so we think they must be everywhere. But the real limit to their population is the winter time when oh. it gets harder to find food, so they really spread out, and that's um, that's what keeps us from having a lot of otters everywhere. Is that in the winter time they have a hard time finding right. food? So, right. um, yeah. So we've got it in here in the winter section. You can learn more about otters or whatever else you're interested in. Well, and what a great Christmas gift this would be. Yeah, they are, and they're only seventeen ninety five too. So it's oh, an affordable wow. Christmas gift. They're really beautiful. There's all sorts of um, great illustrations in here that have been done again by volunteers and community members so it's really gorgeous and who published it we published you it. you published it Excellent yeah art. yeah we did a self-publishing um allison de jong our field notes editor put a lot of work in and mm -hmm. um other uh, staff members, volunteers, board members. It was really a community effort. So, um, yeah, we're really proud of it. Just gorgeous. Now, speaking, I can't believe we're already doing this, but um, speaking of the holidays, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you have a few workshops coming up. Is we that do, right? yeah, for um, for both adults and kids. So, for adults on November 30th, um, we have a wreath making, a holiday wreath making workshop um, where we use native plants, so native pine boughs and other evergreens and so you can learn a little bit about the plants learn about identification and make something for your house at the same time for nice. the holidays and then on December 3rd we have a Saturday kids activity we do about once a month we have Saturday kids activities mm -hmm. that are open to the public um, just for the cost of museum admission otherwise free and the December 3rd one is called the wild gift workshop so kids can come and make holiday gifts all based around different um, natural objects so we're making like pine cone elves and um, uh, animal print paper and things like that. Oh, that's a great opportunity yeah. for your kids. And if um, your children are like my children and don't have an artistically inclined parent, <laughs> this is where to take them. It is. All the stations are set up. You can just go around and make all of the right. gifts you want. <laughs> and keep the mess out of your house, too. Oh, no glitter in my house. Exactly. Excellent, excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, there's also, it looks like, a new issue. Yes. This is our winter or fall issue of the Montana Naturalist magazine. Um, and so there's all sorts of great articles in there. There's a really interesting one about color, um, good kids activities to do, and just information about getting out and in, into nature this fall and winter. So How often does the Naturalist come out? It comes out three times a year. We publish it. There's a fall issue. There's going to be one in January, um, a deep winter issue. And then we put out a spring one. We sort of take a break in the summertime rather than sure. doing all four of them. Because so. everyone's outside. Yeah. We're all <laughs> busy we've got to get out into nature so <laughs> now if you're a member of yes. the uh, of the center then do you get the Montana yes Natural this is List? included and it gets mailed to members of the Montana Natural History Center So another good reason to support mm -hmm. the and actually we just recently for members um, we became a member of the Association of Science and Technology Centers mm. so our members now get reciprocal admission um, with other science and technology centers around the country so if you're a member of the Montana Natural History Center you can get in free at Museum of the Rockies. You can give to Ex Exploration Works in Helena, the Seattle Science Center, and all those count as wow. part of your membership. So I was just in Salt deal. Lake City yesterday and was at the Natural History Center in Salt Lake City, and mm -hmm. it was very pricey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a huge benefit. Yeah, it's a really good bang for your buck, um, especially since our memberships are so reasonable and they go to supporting programs in our communities, but then you can go to other communities and learn there too. So That's a um, great cooperative. Yeah. Program. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's really great. So just a reminder, the, uh, the celebration for Field Notes mm -hmm. is Friday, November 18th? Friday, November 18th, 5 to 7 p.m. at the Natural History Center. And these are available online and at, our, at the center anytime you want to stop by. So. And I'm channeling Joel now, and he would be asking right now, where is? 
the Natural Trade Center? <laughs> That's a good question. We are located at 120 Hickory Street, so we're right by McCormick Park and um, Currents Aquatic Center mm -hmm. down um, by the bike path. So we're right on the bike path. And we also just this last year put in a natural play area out to the east of our building. Oh, really? So um, that's open to the community as well. And it's we sort of wanted to landscape it just to have not a lot of play equipment, but a lot of things kids can play with. So There's so much exciting activity going on down there these days. It's, it's it really gonna, going to very soon be another really active hub yeah. for the community. Yeah, it's great for us. Yeah. Um, and with this play area, we were able to work with a group of kids from Willard High School um, last spring. And we'll be working with another class this spring to continue to evolve the space and give them a service learning opportunity. So um, it's great as far as our neighborhood and our community. We just love to give back. And we're really oh, yeah. we're excited to see it continue to thrive and grow down there. So. Well, thank you for doing all the good work you do, and congratulations on the book. I have about five Christmas gifts taken care of. Thank you, you guys. <laughs> so uh, thanks, Stephanie, for coming by, yeah. and uh, we'll look forward to hearing what you're doing in the new year. Yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. All right, we're going to go away for a little uh, public service announcement, and when we come back, I think we will have Dr. David Gray from Missoula Lions Club. Birthdays come and go each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. our turn. Go to ourturntohelp.org and donate what you can. Hope is on the way. Do you want to answer that? Uh, nah, I never with a kid in the car. It's okay. I'm not here. I'm there. We're back, and I am joined with by Dr. David Gray from the Missoula Lions Club. Hello. Hello, Kim. Nice to be here. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, thank you for coming to talk about what is an annual tradition and very important part of the holidays here in Missoula. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Oh, I'd love to. Missoula Lions Club, as you probably know, is a site-oriented site service organization of men and women. It's the world's largest service organization. And in Missoula, we fund all of our site and other charitable activities through our annual Christmas tree sale. We've been selling Christmas trees in Missoula since World War II. Really? Just I over had no just idea over went 70 that far years. Back. Just over 70 wow. years. And it's a big deal for us. Yeah. And we've been selling at the fairgrounds for well, I've been a member for over 40 years, and we've been selling there every year. We're right on the corner of Malfunction Junction. <laughs> so it really functions pretty well It now. functions <laughs> quite well right now. So our sale is going to open the day after Thanksgiving, which would be next Friday, not this week. Right. The right. trees come in this coming Saturday. We'll be busy fluffing them up and getting them all <laughs> into the bins, pricing, and getting the barn ready for the public on the day after Thanksgiving. So there must be an amazing amount of volunteer time and effort that goes into this sale because it's going every day for... Well, it's for 14, 15, 16 days until we sell out. Right. And we have, we're not that large of an organization anymore. So we put in our hours. Every member puts in five to seven shifts wow. of three hours a shift. So... We put in our time, plus we partner with other civic organizations that also have site 
as a primary. The Delta Gamma girls have helped us on more than one oh, occasion, and nice. I kind of suspect they may show up again this year on the <laughs> weekends. We love them. They're great. Uh, and then our scout troops that we sponsor, they come down and help and clean out the barn and sweep and help customers with service. And, and that's a great experience. For it's them. wonderful for them. Sure, sure. We have the website up on, uh, on the screen right now. And uh, so are there hours? Yes, the sale opens every day at 11 o'clock. We'll run continuously through the day until 8 o'clock in the evening. And that runs every day until we sell out, which is approximately the 15th of December. Yeah, it, I got caught one year. <laughs> it goes fast. Those first two weekends are everything. Mm -hmm. And then the barn gets empty fast. But that first weekend, and you can come in and purchase a tree, and we'll hold it, too. If you oh, can't really? get it home, we have limited space, but yeah. we'll hold 15, 20, 30 trees. So oh. we do have that ability. And you have, uh, I mean, one of the largest uh, selections in the community, well, I it, think. Well, it's, it's a nice selection. Yeah. It is. It's comparable to most of the large, well-stocked tree lots. Mm -hmm. uh, we carry three primary species of trees. The grand fir, which is a plantation-grown tree. The Fraser fir, which isn't quite so bushy, fits a little tighter That's quarters. My, That's my It's point. a hardy tree. And then your traditional... Douglas fir that you would go out and cut in the woods. Right. Of course, those are our three that we primarily sell. Plus, we have wreaths and other novelties for Christmas. So and all sizes. Big, oh, little. oh, heavens, yes. Yeah, from the little tabletop trees for right. a small apartment, studio apartment, to something you'd put in your church that might be 18 feet tall. Wow. So we have very few of those. <laughs> but we have nice selections that you can find whatever you're looking for in those first 10 days. And do you have time to just tell us a little bit about the actual work that the Lions Club does for vision and sight in our community? I would be delighted to. Okay. So we take these funds that we raise and we spend the money and we spend it in Missoula. We spend roughly $20,000 a year uh -huh. on buying eyeglasses, paying for eye exams for children and adults who have a need. Mm -hmm. That's the biggie. That's the primary. Some years ago, we invested in exceedingly complex vision testing technology in which we work with the, the county health department. We work with the school systems. We've purchased equipment for them mm -hmm. as well as we retain some ourselves, and we do a visual eye scan of every school child in Missoula every fall in the early first, second, third, fourth grades. That's amazing. It is absolutely phenomenal. And mm -hmm. with this technology, it's a 10 to 15 second examination. You don't even touch the child. Mm -hmm. It measures multiple parameters of eye health. It is a pass-fail sort of a test. And it's actually called a refer, not a fail. And when we do have a child that does not meet the normal standards of excellence for eyes, then that child is recommended to be referred to a specialist and there's been a number of very interesting health-related issues, ocular eye-related issues detected through this program. And it gets these kids at an early age with corrective lenses, if that's necessary, back on the learning curves to where they're not falling behind. And it's just huge. So I, those, those are our primary. I was diagnosed as extremely nearsighted in first grade, and it made a, it changed my world. Yeah, it's so. all about preschool and first, second grade. Yeah. And if you don't catch it then, the child is already way behind. So this is huge there. Uh, we help with hearing issues. Oh, really? I didn't know that. We will do special needs mm -hmm. situations there. We collect hearing aids and eyeglasses, send them off to be refurbished and reused. Um, just everything to do with visual health in the community to try to do our part. Well, it's a great cause, it's a great organization, and so most of us want a tree in our house this time of year. Go and support the Lions Club at uh, the fairgrounds. It's in the, which building? In is the Llama it? Barn, right on the corner at uh, Malfunction Junction. And you Junction. can go in either side, probably? You can get in right off of South Avenue and duck right in, and the parking mm -hmm. lot just was paved, so it's a little nicer oh, than it that. has been in the past. <laughs> and the barn's all lit up, and you're shopping indoors, but it's refrigerated. It's cold. All right. So go get your tree, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Grace, so much for coming on and reminding us about the good work you do. Thanks, Kim. 
We will be back in just a moment, and we'll be joined by somebody else, Jesse Rogers from the History Museum of the Fort. Mommy, I'm hungry. You're almost there, baby. Do you want to play a game on Mommy's phone? No. I think you will when you see it. AT&T reminds you, it can wait. Nature Nathan here, on my own in the Montana wild. I'm used to having my best mate Liam behind the camera, but he said he was rather tired of getting chased by bears. The show must go on. Set up quite nice, really. Stuff from a lovely fish dinner. And I've got my bear spray. Oh well, I should be fine for the evening. When adventuring in bear country, remember, hike in groups. Bring bear spray and know how to use it. Make noise and don't run. Be bear aware. At Missoula Aging Services, you'll always be greeted with a warm welcome. Whether you are caring for an aging loved one or you're an older adult yourself, our friendly staff is ready to connect you to the help you need. You will always get unbiased advice, a free assessment of your needs, and personalized information about the resources available. See what we can do for you. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Parking over tall, dry grass can spark a wildfire. Only you can prevent wildfires. Who is there at? We are back, and we are joined by Jesse Rogers and Danny Smith from the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. Welcome, you guys. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank and, you. And I mean, obviously, these are pros. They come with their props. <laughs> they come. When I saw Jesse out in the um, in the lobby before the show, and I said, "What's going on?" As usual, she listed twenty different things. <laughs> And I said, well, we'll try to get as many on as we can, but just come back in two Of weeks. course. <laughs> we will be back. <laughs> so what is all of this about? Okay, so we have the Dolly Holiday coming up this Sunday at the Historical Museum. It's a free, fun family event. And we, of course, brought Raggedy Ann and Andy Ann or Aww. Andy Raggedy or whichever <laughs> works out to show that we have some really fun dolls because it is a theme, the Dolly Holiday. We have over 200 dolls in our collections wow. dating back uh, hundreds of years and even from all over the world so we have like these amazing Korean dolls that were brought mm. over and have some certain ties to the Missoula history and just all sorts of fun stuff so we have this grand opening of a new exhibit then we have lots of crafts and fun themed things for the kids and then the trough deli at Old Dale's Dairy they are sponsoring the food. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we're going to have treats, pastries, puffs, tarts, mm. coffee, punch. It's going to be delicious. I'm very excited about the food, as you can <laughs> the tell. Treat <laughs> the treat That's part. Really good. Yeah. Um, Santa will be visiting, and oh he will my. be visiting from uh, 1 to 3. So you can come and get your picture with Santa. And so it's just really our way of you know kicking off the holiday season, showing our appreciation of our community and saying come on down have a good time and it also gives us a chance to put out some eclectic mix of things that we have a lot of at the museum like well, sure because I mean you can't you can't show your whole collection no. all together all the time <laughs> you have to awesome. rotate things exactly so this is a, a, a wonderful excuse to bring out the dolls yeah last year we had teddy bears okay. we had trains the year before so now it's dolls nice. and we have a few dude, dude dolls so you just never know what you're going to find. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as Jesse said, the food will be great. Uh, mm -hmm. Santa will be great. And uh, we also have Elf on a Shelf here. Yeah. Yes. And you got to follow us on Facebook. He's still without a name. <gasps> so we're voting for names right now. If you go to the Dolly Holiday event on Facebook for the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula, just go to the events and you can vote for your favorite name. I think we've got a Hamish O'Higgins. I think he's number one right now. I think he's number one. <laughs> think right he's number one. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert. 
uh, story. Mistletoe. 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 <laughs> now Scott is showing the, the Facebook page. So yes. go there and you can get a lot more information. And you can see a lot of events. <laughs> Look at all those events. Yes. Tons of events. Yeah. Right. So, th so the Dolly event is what's the date again? It is this Sunday, November 20th, November 20th, at the Historical Museum from 12 to 4. And just suggested donation? Or? Yes, we are collecting uh, gently or new uh, used children's toys for our Toys for Tots drive. Again, every time we do this event, we do it so that we can give back to our community. Last year we did books, so kids' books, so we could get those out into the hands of children in need. And this year we're doing toys. So oh, we, this is really important. That's great. Yeah, so yeah. we uh, ask people to bring in a gently used child's toys or new, and uh, we'll get it into Toys for Tots, and some kid will have a wonderful Christmas, and you'll get to enjoy a yeah. wonderful day. Yeah. Now, Danny, uh, before before you arrived, and I was chatting with Jesse, she said you were the Bronfman, Broman Fellow? Yes, this year. yes, that's correct. Can you tell us what that is? I didn't even know this position existed. Yeah, so it's a fellowship offered through Fort Missoula, through the Historical Museum there. Uh, it's offered every year for one year, uh, mostly for students, uh, usually at the University of Montana mm -hmm. here in Missoula. Uh, and it's focus varies among like different projects that either the collections manager or development or any of the marketing or educational outreach programs have to offer. Mm -hmm. So this one is pertaining to the T1 headquarters. They're on the Fort Grounds, which is a really yeah. unique experience, especially as a student uh, being handed uh, such a great project. And it's uh, about the Alien Detention Center. That about the Alien Detention the Center, uh, World War II and post-World War II. Right. Yeah, and it's really important, and I think it'll offer new insight for Missoula um, as, as a place and identity in World War II. Um, Absolutely. Which is a great mm -hmm. opportunity. Yeah. Well, congratulations on being chosen for that position. Thank and, you. Um, and I'm sure it's going to be a good experience for you personally to yes, yes, work absolutely. With a real collection and a building and such an historical building. Yeah, and, and it's allowing me to work with uh, different departments within the museum, which is also a great experience. Yeah. Now, what are these that you have for <laughs> us? So, one of the other events we have coming up, of course, is a little far out, but put it in your calendars now because it's going to be fun. We are hosting a Cheers for Charity pint night, so drink a brew for history mm -hmm. at Lolo Peak Brewing. So we all have, so we all have drinking these. Related yes, and uh, if you turn them around, you oh. will see on the back, uh, these will okay, be spread there, out right. around the uh, Lolo Peak Brewing, and we play pub trivia. So oh, you can fun. kind of see, uh, you come up, play pub trivia, get free swag, and then <laughs> there'll be a raffle and all sorts of fun things. But it also is on December 7th, which is Pearl Harbor Day. And oh. so in addition to our usual exhibit that talks about Montana's history of beer, breweries, prohibition, the whole nine yards, the, basically the history of beer and spirits in Montana mm -hmm. and, um, you know, on a nation as a whole. Right. It's a very fun traveling exhibit. We will also be having a brief exhibit about the World War II history of Missoula specifically, and we'll be able to bring some of the different props and things like that. So we'll be telling uh, multiple stories during this pint night, so you can have some amazing food. I mean, Lolo Peak Brewing has amazing food. Mm -hmm. They also have wine. They have the great selection of beer. We will have a special exhibit that explains each of their beers, because each of their ah. beers has a historic connotation. So we'll be able to kind of talk more in depth about Lolo Peak and its actual beers and just have a good time. I think we get about 50 cents for every beer drank, so that oh, money great. will go back into doing stuff in collections and helping preserve our collections of over 40,000 objects from Missoula's right. past. And we definitely need all the help we can get to make sure that they're preserved for future sake. Well, 50 cents a big beer adds up. That's it does. Wonderful. It really does. And finally, before you go, I want to just ask, I hear you just got done with the annual book sale. Yes. You survived another <laughs> Literally one. Literally about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> uh, well, congratulations. I hear it went well. It was fantastic. We beat all past records. Uh. We had thousands of people show up. 
people just had a fun time. That's what we love about it. We have great volunteers who put this together. Danny was there sorting and hauling and pushing books. And, you know, this was a record year for books. And we had a huge mix of amazing wow. varieties. So I'm looking forward to next year already. I think it's going to be <laughs> yeah. amazing. Oh, I, give I'm, already, oh, I'm also looking please. forward to sleeping for yes, maybe. Yes. Sure. <laughs> and not, sure. not only did, did the sales surpass last year's mm -hmm. uh, total, total amount of revenue, Earned, but also the museum's goals mm -hmm. and Jesse's even personal goals. So yeah, it surpassed my personal goal. Which I'm, yeah, it was it was up there. Oh so. my! Well, yeah. that's really impressive. Thanks. Congratulations! Yeah. That's super. So most important coming up because we'll probably have you on again in a few yes. weeks. But mm -hmm. um, the Dolly, what's it called? The Dolly Holiday. The Dolly and if you holiday. think about Mary Poppins and it's a Jolly Holiday song and just switch it to Dolly Holiday, you won't get it out of your head. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Dolly Holiday this Sunday, which is December 20th, or uh, November, November 20th, <laughs> November 20th. Um, bring a, a new or gently used toy that the um, museum will pass on to a needy, needy family and come have great food and look at the collection of dolls mm -hmm. and have fun activities with your kids. Yes. And bring and the kids for Santa between yeah. 1 and 3. Santa between 1 and 3. And then December 7th, don't forget to swing down to Lolo or swing up to Lolo and have a brew for history. Okay. All right. Thanks, you guys. There's Thank always you. so Thank much you. going on out there. It's <laughs> there always is. fun to learn what's happening. Come out anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to have another brief little PSA, and then we'll be back. For too long, corporate tobacco has exploited our people, manipulated our practices, and profited from our addiction. No more. If you struggle with commercial tobacco addiction, call the American Indian Commercial Tobacco Quit Line today at 1-855-372-0037 and talk to someone who understands. Hello, folks. Do you remember? Look down, look down that lonesome road. Hang down your head and cry. Lonesome road, and that phrase, hang down your head and cry, I think applies especially to any person whose carelessness with a fire in the forest results in the destruction of vitally needed timber and valuable watershed lands. Certainly no road is more lonesome and desolate than a road through a burned-over, blackened, and ugly forest. Look down, look down that lonesome road. Hang down your head and cry. And we are back. What we are looking at on the screen right now is last year's Parade of Lights. I'm with Lighty Wagner from the Missoula Downtown Association, and this is one of your big annual events, isn't it? It is, yeah. This is a really great event to have this time of year. You know, we do a lot during the summer and in the spring and in the fall, and, and this event is our big kind of holiday kickoff, and there's a lot going on downtown this holiday season, it seems like. <laughs> it's got to feel like a huge yeah. snowball. <laughs> that's just getting bigger and bigger. So tell us when the Parade of Lights is and what's involved. So it's on Saturday, December 3rd, um, and it's all throughout downtown. We do uh, children's and families activities at different organizations and businesses in downtown, starting at about 11 and going until 5 p.m. Um, we have Santa's arrival at the Florence Building at mm. 1 p.m., and then photos with Santa at 
the Florence from 1 to 5. And then the Parade of Lights kicks off um, on Higgins, on South Higgins, at 6 p.m. and goes all the way up to Higgins to the Red X's. To the X's. And then Santa <laughs> does the great little countdown, and the Christmas lights go on at the tree at the north, at the X's on North Higgins at about 6 30. And then we've got Free Cocoa up there. Um, the Christian Life Choir will be performing some Christmas carols, some sing alongs, and then they'll do some fancier numbers, I think. And just a good uh, time to mingle, and there'll be bonfires. and. Yeah, it's just a great way to start the holiday celebration. It really is. I mean, if 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 you have kids or don't have kids, there's just nothing. Um, the, nothing feels like the holidays to me more than being just standing around in beautiful downtown Missoula, seeing all your neighbors and community members down there and taking part in the Parade of Lights. It's a really lovely event. I agree, and we will. Um, we do have a couple other things happening that day. Uh, we started last year a downtown Instagram contest, oh. um, and that'll be happening again this year. So um, on that morning, Saturday, December 3rd, you can go onto our website and get a list of all the different places to go and take a selfie with. You can get a group together. A lot of families will do it together. Um, and you, get, you can win a $100 downtown gift card if you get the most points. Oh, this sounds like a great idea. Yeah. So, that, so you're going to have like, it's like a scavenger mm -hmm. hunt. It is. Kind of. Yeah. An okay. Instagram scavenger hunt. And different places are worth different points. You know, one of the things is like, get a pick, piggyback ride from a stranger. And that's obviously <laughs> worth a little bit more. <laughs> But yeah, it's just that's a cool way to get um, you know more of the community involved and and oh absolutely yeah. what a great idea now Scott has the website up um, mm -hmm. and it has a whole long list of all the mm -hmm. events on Saturday and uh, so if you um, have limited time or want to figure out it then it breaks it out to family friendly activities mm -hmm. um, things like that so go to the website which mm -hmm. is downtown dot com and. Do you have time to talk a little bit about the important role the Missoula Downtown Association plays in our community? I mean, what are, what is your mission? So our mission is really to support um, the vibrancy of downtown by hosting things like community events. We are a membership-based organization, so we do have a number of events for our members. Um, and then we do things like we hang and water the flower baskets in downtown during the summer. Right. We do hang, um, or Parks and Rec, in, in partnership with us, hangs the holiday decor, the Christmas lights. Mm -hmm. um, so right now our foundation is actually working on raising some money to replace some of the infrastructure for those Christmas lights. Oh. Um, and part of how we're raising money to do that that is selling the old historic parking meters that were taken out That's this right. last year. That's such a cool idea. Yeah, so you can come to our office and buy a parking meter, and it goes <laughs> to funding the holiday decor downtown because um, that infrastructure is quite old. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, you guys are behind a lot of the things that make downtown Missoula such a wonderful mm -hmm. place to spend time, whether it's eating, you know, fine food or shopping, uh, popping into galleries and museums. I mean, it's, it's all mm -hmm. the work that you do coordinating all these local organizations and businesses. Yeah, I like to think that the biggest benefit of the Missoula Downtown Association is just that connection piece. You know, we, we create these events to bring members of the community into downtown to connect with each other. Um, our membership base is really based around connecting business members and business owners um, so they can partner together. I feel like Missoula is such a, a great relationship town and, and that's to me is, is the main drive behind all of our events and everything that we do is just creating a place where people can come and connect and downtown Missoula is a great place to do that. It certainly is. I mean not all not all communities have a really vibrant downtown mm -hmm. and it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. right? And and those things don't just happen you know miraculously it takes work mm -hmm. and and you guys looking out for the downtown organizations and businesses and getting everyone to work cooperatively to make things happen. Yeah, the Parade of Lights really is a huge example of of that. Yeah. Everybody working together cooperatively. I think it's cooperatively. I think it's one of our events that has the most community support from businesses um, and organizations doing the activities, entering floats in the parade, which you can still do, um, and anyone is welcome to do that. Oh, um, really? Mm -hmm. So if they go to the, if we go to the website, mm -hmm. we can see where to. Yep, you um, can apply. enter online. Um, there's a twenty-five dollar 
create entry fee, right. but yeah, it doesn't have to be a nonprofit. Any business or anyone can do that. We have a lot of different groups. Um, you know, we have people who will sing on their float, or you know, like the <laughs> gymnastics teams and dance teams come down, sure. and the Missoula Arctic Cat usually brings some snow machines and puts the Grinch on them, and you know, it's just <laughs> fun. I don't know. Yeah, it's really a cool event. It really has such great community support. Um, yeah, just from all around. So it's Saturday, December 3rd. Yes. And again, the hours? The activities begin at noon. Um, the parade is at 6. And then Santa is in the Florence from 1 to 5 p.m. Uh, it's already here, you guys. I can't believe it. But we'll all be there getting in the holiday spirit. So thank you, Lydie, so much for coming to tell us what's going on this Thanks year. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking again in the new year. Definitely. All right, so we are going to have another little break, and then we, when we come back, there's even more Christmas on Missoula Live. <clears throat> and we're back, and I'm here with Amy Allison Thompson, who is the new executive director of the Pavarello Center, and I, we haven't met. It's great to meet you. Nice to meet you. How long have you been at the job? So I started um, the end of August, so oh, wow. just, yeah, just a couple months in. All right, mm -hmm. all right. Well, you have an event coming up, I hear. We have two, um, both coming on November 22nd. Um, the Loose Caboose is doing their Cup of Caring, and so they'll be donating 50 cents per cup of coffee purchased there um, from 5.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Wow, how yeah, nice. Which is wonderful. And yeah. then on that same day, um, Tamarack is doing their Community Pint Night for the Pavarello Center, and so they'll be donating 75 cents per pint to us um, that evening from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. That's terrific. So whether you're getting caffeinated or... <laughs> Pick your poison. Yeah, or beer and coffee, well, you got to like one of them, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. And this is happening the, on November 22nd? That's correct. Which is, uh, I'm trying to do the math in my head, uh, Tuesday? I believe so, yes. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, and we're... Remind us where the loose caboose and tamarack are so but people can be sure to sure, stop in. Sure, absolutely. So there's, um, I'm not sure where all of the loose cabooses are. I know there's, there's for sure, them, right? I think there's a couple, but there's uh, for sure the one on the corner of Malfunction Junction by Jiffy Lube there. Right. And then the um, tamarack is located downtown on Front Street. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, do you, does the Pavarello partner with community businesses like this? Uh, a lot? Is this a new thing? Um, no, it's it's something we've done in the past. Um, it's something that we'll continue to do as mm -hmm. much as we're able to. Absolutely. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about is just Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas. Right. Um, we really at the Pavarillo Center rely on um, you know the support of the community to really um, you know keep the doors open and so um, as Thanksgiving gets closer um, folks are welcome to donate turkeys, um, other items that we need regularly. Our um, toilet paper is a big one. We need that all the oh, time. That's a real really. necessity, yeah. which is a funny thing, but um, it's something we're in need of all the time. Um, we also can always use socks, especially as it's getting colder, hats, gloves, scarves, things like that um, we can always use. So 
That's something it's a good can... idea. As we all kind of drag out all of the winter mufflers, scarves, things like that, go through and kind of, you know, how many of them do you really need? I have more than I can wear at any given time. Right, yes. So, um, pass on the ones you're not using. So this is good to know. Um, Besides money, which is always welcome, for right. sure. <laughs> um, another way to help is through donations, and you're saying food, but also clothing. Yep, um, we don't take clothing typically. We do take coats um, and and scarves and gloves and hats, but typically clothing. We like to refer to our community partners. There are a number of um, different organizations yeah. that help out with clothing, so um, we really try to kind of share in that, and so we refer our clients there. Um, but yes, absolutely, um, coats and and gloves and hats, all of that we can use. Yep. And is it is it still a tradition to serve a holiday meal? Yes. At the park? Yes. Um, so we'll be doing our holiday meal. We're going to be combining a essentially lunch and dinner, just having a long extended um, time for dinner. And so that will be from 1130 until 430 that we'll just be serving Thanksgiving dinner all day long. Wow. Mm -hmm. And are you still looking for volunteers for that? You know, for Thanksgiving, we're all set. I believe we are That's all set for volunteers. Or... Yes, which um, we just confirmed today that we're covered, which is great wow. um, since Thanksgiving is already next week, which I is know. crazy. <laughs> um, and then, but we're always looking for volunteers in general. And especially as the holidays come up, we love having volunteers in to serve. So. Oh, I'm sure that that's true and mm -hmm. that it's helpful. Yes, and we can always use help with meal prep. Um, I recently spent, I've been shadowing all the programs at the POV just because I'm a, more of a hands-on learner. Um, and I actually really enjoyed my kitchen shift. I like I cut up vegetables for hours and I actually had a great time. So. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, I would like the kitchen work. <laughs> I, should, I should volunteer. Yeah, so, absolutely. Amy, did you come here from out, outside of Missoula? Or? So, yeah, I actually... Um, used to live in Missoula. I lived in Missoula for 10 years. Um, we left about five years ago. Um, but prior to that, I actually worked at the Pavarillo Center for three years. So I'm not new to the pop. So you knew what you were taking mm -hmm. on. I did. How important yep. it is. Yep. And and then what a challenge it is, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. But I'm incredibly excited to be at the Pavarillo Center and just very, very happy and to be there. And in a new building, yes. a new beautiful building. Yes, and that's something that I've really appreciated being gone for five years. <laughs> it's coming you back came to this back at beautiful. The right time. Yep, yeah. coming back into this beautiful <laughs> building has been, you know, it's it's very functional and allows us to focus on our clients instead of you know keeping the building together. Right. So that's been really great. Well, it's so nice to meet you. Thank you for taking on this sure. crucial job and, and position in our community. Um, welcome back to Missoula. Thank you. And uh, for all of you out there, extra hats, mittens, gloves, socks, scarves, coats, food, toilet paper. <laughs> they can use it all, and they can also use your money and your time. So uh, contribute to the POV because they keep our community going. Thank you so much Thank for you. being here. Sure. All right, we have one last patient guest, Gary Gillette, and he will be back in just a minute. Thank you.
And we're back. I'm here with the very patient Gary July. <laughs> <laughs> I'm retired. I can afford to... I can afford to be more patient. Time is just an endless experience. <laughs> it's, not, it's not quite like that, but but uh, yeah, she had she had an appointment and and I've got a rehearsal, but not for a couple hours. And what are you rehearsing for? Ah, uh, this one. I'm starting a I'm starting another big band, uh, oh, really? like a secondary big band oh, uh, for God. all the folks that don't quite uh, make it into Ed Norton Big Band. I'm starting to. Uh, another big band called Missoula Big Band. We're going to perform it at the senior uh, places around town. Oh, that's exciting news! Yeah. I didn't even know about. Yeah, that. I just this is I've, I'm in retirement, and people have been bothering me for years about <laughs> the, about doing something like this. So it's starting tonight. All right. Well, good luck with that. Uh -huh. You're here <laughs> to talk about a Missoula institution <laughs> called Tuba Christmas. Tuba Christmas time already. <laughs> oh man. How many years? Uh -huh. Uh, it's been going on for more than 40, and we've been doing it close to 30 here. Wow. 30? Yeah, I, I judge it to, uh, according to the age of my younger son. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. At least <laughs> so then, As long as you can remember how old your younger <laughs> son is. Yeah, you're okay, more, right? around 30. Uh, somewhere like that. in there, yeah, <laughs> one or two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so t t describe it for people in case they saw a little bit of it, and I think we'll close sure. with more. But Good. talk to us about the reason for doing uh, it. Uh, there's uh, uh, the, the godfather of tubas, who, who was Harvey Phillips. He taught tuba at, at Indiana University. And he was a great musician and a wonderful man, but he was also quite eccentric in his promotion of the tuba. And, <laughs> and he had great teachers. Bill Bell, his, his teacher, was really a circus musician. And man, it used to be such a, a gas playing in the circus bands. I got to play in several here really? uh, before it just became some dude with a laptop computer. Yeah, right. uh, uh, circuses would uh, travel with a core of musicians and then fill it in with local union musicians. Oh, and that's fascinating. It was history. so much I fun. No idea. And uh, the playing, the, the 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 music that was available was was so much fun and so difficult. Well, Harvey's Harvey's teacher was a circus musician, uh, yeah. Bill Bell, and but he was born on Christmas Day. And Harvey was looking for some promotion of the tuba that usually sits in the back of the uh, of the uh, ensemble and plays low, slow parts and mm -hmm. doesn't get much uh, uh, notoriety. And he came up with this ridiculous idea of, of featuring the tuba in playing of traditional Christmas tunes um, in four-part harmony. So just playing the melody itself uh, w would have gotten old in a hurry. Right. So scored like most music in four parts. So the tuba gets, gets uh, the tenor and the bass parts and then the tuba's little cousin, which is the baritone horn mm -hmm. or euphonium, which is really a tenor tuba, they get, for the most part, they get the soprano and the alto part. So it's... This is a question I've always had. So a baritone is the same thing as a euphonium? Yeah. It, the, the bore is a little smaller, so the sound's a little thinner and lighter. That's mm -hmm. a better way of saying it. But the two horns are, are mostly... Um, uh, separated by where they came from. Euphonium sound came out of Europe and baritone came out of America. Oh. But the horns read and they, and they, to, the, mm -hmm. to the amateur, they, 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 how can you tell the difference? Okay. You know, it's a very small deal. Right. Small deal. So when is Tuba Christmas this <laughs> I got, year? I got, I got going here about the history. I of the know, event. but I That's like, right. and we have the time, That's and right. I like hearing about it. Uh, the event is, is always the second Friday of uh, December, which this year is the 9th. December 9th, and is it at the mall? At the mall, it's every, and this year, with with my own retirement, I'm, I'm trying to stay away from school as much as I possibly uh -huh. can. It just feels right to stay away from school after having been there for so many years, yeah. uh, that we're rehearsing, everything has taken place at the mall. There's. There's room at the mall for us to make it a one-stop shop. And it's no big deal for everyone that comes and listens to us. But all us tuba players, it's wonderful. Oh. We, we, we're going <laughs> to go at the old Sears and just oh. walk right in, take our cases out, rehearse in oh, the old Sears store, right. and leave all our stuff there, then go out and catch lunch. Everyone will eat at the mall. The mall, mall likes that idea. Yeah, right. And, uh, and shop, and then uh, we'll go back and get our horns uh, after dinner break, and we'll do our performance at 7 o'clock at the clock court right. at Southgate Mall. So 
7 p.m. Uh, December 9th. 9th. Um, at the mall, and how many musicians will be involved? There's, there's, all, we always toy with between 80 and 100. Oh my gosh, there's it's, that many people that know how to play the tuba? <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. You know, there's plenty of, there's plenty of students and lots of teachers bring their students. Right. But there's plenty of folks that play in our community bands and our city bands and people that just live, you know, we always have, like a family come from Arley, and Aww. there's always three or four from Drummond, and there's people that just come out of the woodwork down to Bitter, and we and we always have people that just show up from out of state. That it's a national event. It happens. It's an international event, right. and so we get good coverage through the international tubachristmas.com, and sure. and we always have people that are here on vacation or work or travel right. or whatever, and they just show up. I have no idea <laughs> whoever is going to show up, which which makes it fun. Instead of just doing the same thing with the same people, yeah. every year we mix up the tunes, and then every year it's like, well, who's here this year? <laughs> what? A and let's hope they can play. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's find out we can put right. this. We have a core of people that I can count on. Sure. And I have a couple of soloists always, and I make sure that that, that Ben Kirby, who is the university tuba instructor, mm -hmm. that, that Ben can be there with the right. studio. Right. And I always put the pinch on my older boy, who's a fantastic <laughs> tuba player, to make sure I got those cats down down front uh, and, a, and a bunch of uh, folks that play in the city band with sure. me in the summertime that, that just can't wait to have the, the to sit in the front row. Yeah. All these euphonium players, I got five or six in the city band, and they always have to sit in the back. We, I feature them on one song every year, but now they're featured they're front throughout, right, right in the front. Right. They, it's their day to shine. So if there are closet euphonium players Oh, out there, I dare you. <laughs> <laughs> do, they, do they have to sign up? Or they they, they, early, they or? can before if they okay. it's because some people want the music to practice. Okay, that's and, a good point. And yeah. they can they can just go to tubachristmas.com okay. and all the contact information is there, including how to get in touch with me. So they can register beforehand. I can get the music. Super. Uh, and then, uh, or if things don't work out, or if they're comfy with just showing up, all they got to do is show up at the mall mm -hmm. for a four o'clock rehearsal. And we rehearse from four to five thirty and then take a dinner break, and then come back and share our music with the masses. And the masses is right. I mean, <laughs> that are, there's a huge audience. Oh, they, they, right. they bring out those little things like at, at uh, Disney World, you know, to keep <laughs> lines. So they, so the for, rope uh, lines. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Right. No, that's to keep people moving around that are sh they're at a shop. Right. And, then, and then we have to stop. You know, I, we play two sets. That's part of the deal with the mall because, you know, they... They are primarily a shopping facility. It's a commercial I, I, un yes. I understand. It's right. foreign to me, but I had, <laughs> they've instructed me. Trish has been good with me to keep people available that uh, if they're going to move and, and shop, uh, we, uh, we'll, we'll continue to play, but then we'll stop halfway between, and then we'll all break for a little bit, and mm -hmm. then we'll come back and, and do an, an entirely new set. As well. So, have you been doing this the entire time? Of yes, Missoula? I have. I wanted to make sure that I didn't step on someone's toes uh, when I moved to Missoula. I, w I waited a year. At that point, Lance Boyd yeah, was the low brass guy in town, and I and I asked Lance if he was going to do it. He said, "No, no, I've got too much to do." I said, "Is it okay if I said you have at it, July?" And by that time, I had gotten to know uh, Harvey Phillips, mm -hmm. who was still alive at that time, and I'm involved with a a regional summertime tuba festival that we hosted here oh, this past July. And so I've gotten to know Harvey, and Harvey was saying, yeah, man, come on, kid, start that <laughs> off in Missoula. <laughs> well, thank you for giving us all a wonderful holiday treat every year. You're and welcome. even as you've retired from the school system. <laughs> That's it. I just don't follow still... bells anymore. <laughs> That's the only thing that's, that's different. Right. I'm going to continue. Do you still hear that ringing? Oh, yeah. Well, that's that's tinnitus. Around. Yes. That's, oh, yeah. that's from all those flute players that's and right. trumpet players. But right. the tuba, it's just it's nothing more than this beautiful, warm, enveloping Mellow. sound. Yes. So people can shop and they can talk to each other and still hear us. We're right. not obnoxious no. at all. So Saturday, December 9th, 7 p.m. Friday. Friday, I'm sorry. Friday. Friday, December 9th, 7 p.m. at the mall at the clock tower right in the middle. Um, 
to get in the holiday spirit. There's nothing better. Thank you so much, Gary, for Thank coming you. and talking about it. Thank you for having me, Kim. See I ya. I think that's it for Missoula Live uh, on this date. And come back in two weeks when Joel will be back by my side. It was scary doing it alone, but we made it. You did just fine. <laughs> Who missed What's his name? I can't. I, I don't know, know that guy <laughs> who used to hang out at the end of the couch. No one missed him. <laughs> Thank you.